Good morning. It's good to see everyone out to receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your bulletin insert, I ask you to please turn to that for some announcements here this morning. As you can see at the very top, it says Wittenberg Sunday. Uh, just a way of mention, the 2022 North Dakota District Convention is coming up in January, and each church is to take an offering for that. And with that in mind, uh, the offering this year for the convention is going to be the Wittenberg Chapel at UND Grand Forks. And so there's a metal box in the very back as you exit uh, to the left. And that offering box will be going towards Wittenberg Sunday. So if you're so inclined to give towards that, that is what that is for. Even if you are an NDSU graduate, you can still tithe towards the UND uh, Chapel there. That uh, won't hurt at all. So keep that in mind. Following the service today... We are going to be having a baptism luncheon. Uh, little Laura is going to be baptized today, so we rejoice with the Marshners, with Little Laura. And uh, they have a little luncheon with uh, root beer floats and so forth, and they said, you know what, instead of being selective to who invite, they said, just tell everyone they can come. So you're invited to come for that and have a celebration uh, with the Marshner family uh, following the second service. Brief mention, the church will be open tomorrow. The uh, carpet cleaning has been rescheduled for the week after, so the church will be open. Women's Bible study will be uh, postponed this Tuesday uh, due to Thanksgiving. The men, however, will have Bible study at 645 on Wednesday. And then with Wednesday, keep in mind, uh, Wednesday night we're going to be having a Thanksgiving soup and sandwich and then an evening prayer service for Thanksgiving. So this year we're going to be trying something a little bit different. No service on Thanksgiving Day, uh, but the service has been shifted to Wednesday night. So if you are able to come, come get some Thanksgiving soup and sandwiches, and then stick around for the evening prayer service here at the church on Wednesday night. So keep that in mind as well. Next Sunday, keep in mind, uh, there is Christmas decorating. So if you're able to stick around for that, uh, we'll be decorating the church for Christmas season. And so uh, if you're able to bring maybe a, a sack lunch or get some food, and then stick around for that Christmas decorating as well. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed or overlooked at this time? Well, today is the last Sunday of the church year, the calendar. We're going to be hearing a gospel lesson about ten virgins or ten uh, bridesmaids that do not have, well, actually five of them do not have oil. They're not ready for the banquet. We're talking about being alert and being ready for not only the second coming of Christ, but being ready for death itself. We'll hear more about that in the text here in the sermon. But before we do so, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 672. Hymn number 672.
We continue on the top of 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this said, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro it printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. The ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away.
be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, absolve your people from their offenses that, from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our frailty we have brought upon ourselves, we may be delivered by your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from Isaiah, the 65th chapter. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in any my holy mountains, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Well, people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are children of light, children of the day, we're not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober, For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. According to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, at midnight, there was a cry. Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, 
Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the, afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Ask the congregation to please be seated, and we will ask little Laura and family to come forward for the baptism this morning. Ask the congregation to please turn to 268 to follow along as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemna condemnation. But the Father of all mercies has, Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are you named? Laura Beth Marshner. Laura Beth Marshner. Receive the sign of the cross both upon your head and upon your heart, marking you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all of his hosts in the Red Sea. Yet you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Laura according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through the saving flood, all sin in her, which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith as expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They're to pray for them, support them, in their ongoing instruction and nurture the Christian faith and encourage them towards the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They're at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. For both of these sponsors, this is your attention to serve Laura as a sponsor in the Christian faith. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel of St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, 
For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Top our Lord and trusting in his promises, let us pray the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in, your going out from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Ask parents and sponsors to ask, answer these questions on behalf of Laura. Laura, do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you renounce all of his works? Yes. Do you renounce all of his ways? Yes. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church? the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes. Laura, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. Come right over here. Laura Beth Marshner, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of the water and spirit and has forgiven you of all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace, dear Laura, unto life everlasting. Amen. Receive this white garment. Scott, I'll ask you to please place this garment over Laura. Wrap her up nice and tight there. Receive this white garment to show that you've been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness. Christ's righteousness that covers all of your sins. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Also receive this light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and ever be watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. Know that the Son of God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heir with all the presents of the treasures of heaven, and in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might bear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Ask the congregation to please stand as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Laura the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, that you would keep her in this baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, that she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all of your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you, little Laura. Amen. 
have a couple things. You guys stick around here one second, a couple things to pass on to you. Congregation may be seated. We have a cross you can hang in her room for a baptismal cross. Uh, we have a person in the church, a family in the church that uh, has bought my first hymnal. And so that is uh, for you guys and her first hymnal to sing to her the joys of Christ. And we also have our baptismal certi certificates. And as a way of reminder to the church as well, uh, we can print these in our church office. So if you were baptized here at St. Paul's, you want a copy, uh, Ruth can do these in the office. They're just glorious. Uh, I encourage you to frame that, put it into her room so that you can always point to and say that she belongs to Jesus in spite of what happens in this world, that she has been claimed. Lord bless and keep you guys. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll ask the congregation to please turn to the hymn of the day. The hymn of the day. In the name 
of Jesus. Amen. Five of them were fools. Yes, five of those bridesmaids were fools. Five were wise, though. The reason being? Well, the foolish bridesmaids, they failed. The foolish bridesmaids, they failed to take extra oil. Oil for their lamps. As a result, they missed out on the great wedding banquet. Yes, they missed out. And so the point of Jesus' parable from the reading of the Gospel of Matthew here this morning is quite clear. It's very, very clear. Don't be a fool. Yes, he says to you and me, do not be a fool. Do not be like one of those foolish bridesmaids. Don't be a fool. Jesus is coming back someday. And if you're not careful, you will miss out. You will miss out on the glory of eternal life. But you and I, we're not fools, are we? Ah, of course not. We're not fools. Unfortunately, my friends, yeah, unfortunately, we often are. Yes, we often are. You see, it is important to understand that being foolish is not necessarily about having a low IQ. Being foolish is not about having bad grades or scoring remarkably low on an ACT test. You see, the bridesmaids were not foolish because they were dumb hicks or perhaps uneducated country peasants or backwards blue-collar workers. But instead, they were foolish because they were not prepared. They were foolish because they were not alert to the fact that the groom was coming. What this means is that it is quite possible to have a very high IQ and still be a fool. It is possible to be a city slicker and a white-collar worker and still be a pitied fool. The reason being, a fool is someone who does not have oil for their lamp. They do not recognize that the groom is coming and that the wedding feast is at hand. And so we can say that fools are everywhere. Yes, fools are everywhere. And you and I, well, more often than not, we are among those fools, tragically stated. For example, consider all the energy that we spend by trying to avoid the coming of death. Just consider a moment how we try to avoid the coming of death. Now, please do not deceive yourself as we think about this. Each and, each and every one of us tries to avoid the idea of the end of death itself. For example, speaking to you young people today. Yes, you young people. We're going to pick on you for a moment. Young people in America, they spend a tremendous amount of time trying to avoid anything associated with death itself. They often avoid funerals. And when they do go to funerals, well, it's not really a funeral, but it is a celebration of life. And it oftentimes seems to be more of a pep rally, a celebration, a party, than it is a sense of mourning and sorrow. An absence of death, perhaps. Furthermore, the movies of young people always have a hero. They always seem to have a hero in these movies, a hero that avoids death. And if that hero does succumb to death, well, then in the sequel, the second movie or the third movie, they somehow come back to life. They somehow escape the sting of death itself. And in video games. Now, don't forget video games. In video games, well, if the gaming character that is being gamed in that TV system or that control system that Xbox, whatever it may be, when that person, that character on the screen dies and fails to fulfill that mission, well, you just simply hit the button, hit A or B or start, and the new character is generated and you can fulfill the mission. Indeed, when young individuals go the way of foolishness, they live as if there is no end, and death is put off as something that they can consider later on when they get old. Yes, when they get old. But that is the problem. Nobody is getting old anymore. You see, 40s, I'm told, are the new 30s. Good for me. Also, 60, I've been told, is the new 40. Good for you. The fact of the matter is this, is that age is being redefined in America. Everyone is apparently young, even though they are old. As a result, those older in age live just as much in foolishness as the young people do. Now to pick on you older folks, I want to mention this, I cannot count the number of times, the number of conversations that I've had over the years, in the last 20 years, with older individuals worrying about if they have enough money to make it. 
Well, they have enough money to make it. Well, at the very same time, death may be right around the corner from them. For example, if a person has $200,000 in the bank, is collecting a pension as well as Social Security, and is 82 years old with below average health, there is no way that they will run out of money. Considering that life expectancy is 79 years old in America, they've already beat the average death rate by three years, the odds of death by three years. However, the fact still remains that they will die before they will ever have to worry about running out of money. But here's the point. When foolishness sets in, when foolishness grabs a hold of the mind, when foolishness grabs a hold of their worldview, well, these older individuals believe that they're going to run out of money because they believe that they will live forever. They function as if there is no end, which is the reason why they worry that their money won't last. Sure, if they live to be 130 years old, they perhaps might run out of money, but clearly, this is not reality. To the point, a fool lives in a fake world. A fool denies the reality of death. Regardless, though, death, it comes for us all. Whether we are young or whether we are old, we cannot escape it. That is, unless Jesus comes back first, though. And this brings us to the second area of our foolishness. In our parable that we heard here from this morning, in the reading of the Gospel of Matthew, it is clear that groom Jesus is going to come back. In fact, we confess it here each and every Sunday. We confess, we say, Jesus will come to judge the living and the dead, that he will come back someday, someday again. Now, dear friends, if we do not die first, we must mark this. There will be an end to this life under the sun with Christ's second coming. So hear this loud and clear. The fact of the matter is this. The fat lady will sing. The music will stop. We will not pass go. The game will end. Things will not go on forever. He said, there's only two outcomes. Only two outcomes. Either everything will come to the end for you and me when we hit that cold grave and we're buried six feet under, or Jesus ends everything by coming back again. That's the only two options. And my friends, if you do not comprehend this real reality, if we do not comprehend this reality, well, we are fools. We're fools to be pitied. You see, when we act like this, when we think like this, we're no better off than those silly bridesmaids that had a lamp with no oil. Our foolishness will result in you and I missing the heavenly banquet. Now please know that this is hard to say. These words are very, very hard to say. They're hard because Jesus' parable is a very, very hard parable. It's a very sobering parable. You see, Jesus, he's intending to tell you and me, he's tending to say this in this parable. He's saying this, Listen up, stay alert. Don't be a blind, stupid fool. You have no idea when I might come back again. And so if we do not want to be a fool, yeah, if we do not want to be a fool, we obviously need to be wise. We need to be wise like those five other bridesmaids to be wise indeed. Now perhaps you and I might think that being wise is to have a superior intellect or a high IQ. But no, that is not the case, as we've already mentioned. Being wise is nothing more, though, than being alert. That's the whole key. To be wise is to be alert, to be attentive, to be aware. In fact, Jesus uses the same word wise, the same word wise, numerous other times in the New Testament. The word wise is applied to that man who builds his house, not upon the sand, but upon the rocks, for he knew the storms would come. The word wise is used also of that shrewd manager who lost his job, but he gathered friends for himself, that he was wise preparing for what was coming, his unemployment. And so the point of this is being wise is not to be book smart or to be some sort of sage, but simply being prepared, not only for death, but also for Jesus' second coming. Now, with all this said, is Jesus calling us to be a bunch of preppers, as, as they would say? 
Well, in a way, this is exactly what he's calling us, is to be preppers, but not necessarily preppers who are preparing for the dangers of a natural disaster or societal collapse or a nuclear war by stockpiling a bunch of supplies and goods. Instead, we are to be prepared by having oil, oil for our lamps. And that oil is nothing else other than the forgiveness of sins. The grace of God for sinners such as you and me. But here's the catch. Here is the kicker. Here's what is so incredibly powerful for you and me to consider right now. The fool, mark this, the fool is the one who thinks he does not need forgiveness. The fool is the one who thinks he does not need grace. Which is why his lamp is always empty. But the wise, well the wise, well they will always have their lamps full of oil. The forgiveness of sins. Not because they have somehow acquired the grace of God by their own reason or their own strength, but instead they have this oil because they simply have received it as a sheer gift. As a gift. Hear this loud and clear. The very thing needed to be admitted to the heavenly banquet is the very thing that the groom, Jesus Christ, gives you as a gift. Hear that loud and clear. As a sheer gift. My friends, look upon Christ and his gifts, his gifts for you. In Christ, you not only have wisdom, but you have oil for your lamps. That oil, which is the divine favor, the divine forgiveness, the divine righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, all for you as a sheer gift. And so, wise saints, remember your baptisms this day, right now. Be alert. Open the eyes, chins up, look at this font, remember your baptisms. You were snatched from darkness unto light. You were marked as one of the redeemed. God put his name upon you to claim you as his own so that you would never escape his grasp. You belong to Christ and are claimed by him. And you are prepared for the end in Christ. God be praised. Wise saints, open your ears. Remember the absolution in this church. Hear it again and again and again in those ears. May it be cemented in your ears. You are not condemned. No matter what the world says, no matter what the devil whispers into your ears, no matter what your old Adam says, you are not condemned. Christ's word is stronger than death. It is stronger than the whispers of evil. You are not condemned in Jesus Christ. That absolution will hold you to the end and through the end. Why, saints... Receive Christ's body and blood. And in so doing, know that you kneel at a heavenly banquet. Yes, at a heavenly banquet that is a foretaste of the eternal banquet to come where there is no more death, where there is no more suffering, no more fear. Why, saints, you and I do not know the last day of our life when we, when we will be tucked into our graves. And we do not know the last day when Jesus will return to take us home. But we do know that oil, that the word and sacraments, they're here for us today. They're for you. And the word and sacraments will be here for us yet again tomorrow and the week after that. And the week after that and after that and after that. This means that we will never be low on oil. There is more grace in Christ, more forgiveness in Christ than we have sins. And he never stops blessing and giving it to us, to you. May God preserve us and keep us full, full of his forgiveness until that day when he awakes us and takes us to that great wedding banquet. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Ask the congregation to please stand for the offertory.
Kesha may be seated for the offering. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can be also mailed into the church office or conducted through the church website online. As congregation, to please stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, send forth your Son, we pray, to lead home his bride, the church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter his eternal wedding feast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to all your baptized people diligence to watch for the Savior's appearing, that they may be prepared for that joyous day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. King of the nations, hear our prayers for those who lead our country and all who serve in our military. Fill them with your wisdom and protect them in every danger. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, you promised everlasting joy to your people. Remember all in trying circumstances, the sick, the suffering, the dying, the mourning, especially we pray this morning for Barb and Betty and Pat, Brianne, Brian, Carl, Charlotte, David, Dean, Dory, George, James, Jeff, Joellen, Leon, Wade and Kathy, Marilyn, Maya, Philip, Randy, Rita, Robert, Ruth, Suzanne, Ted, and Travis. We also pray for Jared Street and family in the recent passing of his grandmother, Leonard and Maria Nelson in the recent passing of their grandson, and Linda, Hus Linda Hudson in the recent passing of her nephew. Comfort them, we pray, O Lord, with your divine promises and grant your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on 194, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, or one of our sister congregations, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, and trusting in his promises we are bold to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ask the congregation to please stand for the Nunc Dimittis on 199. Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. We the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Maybe see it for departing him, hymn number 515.
good morning to each and every one of you again. Um, as a way of reminder, before you leave, I ask you to please fill out the blue book at the very end and pass it down and return it back to the very end. Um, also, fail to mention at the very beginning of the service, uh, if you ordered Lefsa, uh, the youth started baking Lefsa on Wednesday. So it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And if I'm not mistaken, it was over 1,300 Lefsas. Is that plural? Lefsas? Lefsa? 1,300. 1,300 round little potato squares uh, they made, and I know there's a couple other round circles, round circles, round potato squares, so to, uh, it's been a long day, round potato lefsa, yeah, yeah, anyway, pick it up, yep, if you have, and I think if there might be some more, if you're interested, check with them down the hall there for that as well, and again, reminder for next Sunday, we will be decorating the church following the second service as well. Oh, and then ask to pray, too. Thank you, Scott. Let's pray for those of you sticking around for the luncheon. Let's pray here uh, together. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts rest. Amen. We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. <clears throat> well, as we heard today, we need oil for those lamps, and the very thing that we need is given to us as a free gift. You have Christ, and you have his gifts, poured out, given to you. No shortage for you each and every day, each and every week. Go in that joy, the hope, knowing you're prepared, you are wise in Christ. Amen. Thank you. 